God wants our families to thrive. Today on Better Together, Cece Winans, Lisa Harper, Tony Collier, Rebecca Lyons, and Mo Isom Aiken are all talking about how to create safe spaces for our loved ones to find encouragement, support, and growth. Come on, join us. A few years ago, um, things truly shifted for our family. Uh, we started to learn and hear so much from others in the body of Christ about the family and about the thriving model for the family. Mm -hmm. My friend Jefferson uses this expression, but he talked about his own family being a multi-generational family team on mission together. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I had never even <laughs> heard the concept so much of my own life, even after coming to know Christ, was wound around, um, Lord, what is your call for my life? Right. What are your plans for me? Mm -hmm. And I was then married and a few kids deep <laughs> and realizing the prayer had never actually shifted wow. from what is your plan for my life to what is your plan and your purpose for our life right. for so our good. family. Yes. Yeah. What is the mission that you are looking to carry out through this family team? Yeah. And when I started leaning into that, when we began to pray around that, it just opened my eyes to all God had sown in to our mm. family model. We began to pray with vision, cast vision. What do you have yeah. for us together? And it helped me begin to sit down and see, okay, I've spent a lot of my life assessing what the gifts and talents on myself are. Hello. <laughs> what have you woven into my husband that I mm -hmm. lack? What mm -hmm. are the gifts and talents on his life? What have you sown into my children? Mm -hmm. What do I see rising out of them yeah. that are currently and will continue to contribute to this unit that you've brought together for purpose, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when my focus and my gaze started to shift from just me on mission to we on mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really it good. really shifted I things in our that. home. Mm -hmm. And my kids are five, four, two, and five months. Most people would think, okay. how? Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, right. when you're traveling or in what yeah. you all are doing, how do they yeah. contribute? They contribute richly. Mm -hmm. And I want them to know at these ages, what they bring to the table is valuable yeah. and of purpose so, so that we can mature together. So we can continue to walk mm -hmm. and carry forth the mission um, and be able to celebrate one another in the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it shifted so much. Yeah. And even in the structure of our own home, we've seen thriving. When I guess it shifted, I guess at the core from me to mm -hmm. we yeah. and um, God's brought such healing yeah. and rest yeah. and rhythms yeah. and wholeness in that process. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to know from you all, how have you seen thriving truly take place in your family? And was there a season where maybe you were well-intentioned, but pieces were out of place and the whole of the family wasn't able to thrive? Yeah, I definitely had that season as a momager. You know, mm -hmm. I was like oh, manager of the home and making sure everybody was doing, you know, like, you know, all the things like crossing all the T's and dotting the I's and making the bed and like trying to help them be independent, but less about nurturing their soul, right? Mm -hmm. About really speaking life and calling out life over them. It's almost as if I thought that wasn't really a thing until mm -hmm. you became like eight, nine or 10. And then the personality mm -hmm. came out. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, I, I did notice their uniquenesses when they were young. And we would kind of laugh at like, kind of like, which kid was like street smart, and which kid would just like feel their feelings and then think, right? Yeah, like right, feel first, yeah. think second. And I was like, I, I, I connect with I that connect person. With um, but, but then as they did become elementary age and we started to really see the Holy Spirit at work in their lives and watching, it, it, not that it wasn't there all along. Mm -hmm. right. I think I was just more aware of it mm -hmm. as they got older and had their own personality and their own will and their mm -hmm. own desires. And yeah. It did. It did. Gabe and I, we first of all started with each other, mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know, because you can have, you can have two strong willed people mm -hmm. that are very passionate who, you know, want to have the last word. And then all of a sudden we're like, you know, I want to defer in this area. And it's like that mutual submission has really, truly mm -hmm. kind of more yes. been honed yeah. in this last decade when we did start to appreciate each other's strengths instead of right. trying to kind yeah. of, I don't know, outspeak the other person. Right. And then talking about the kids, I think my greatest joy, even to this day, now that my kids are 20, 18, 16, mm -hmm. and then eight, mm -hmm. is in the older ones, 
just speaking so much life and vision over them that I feel yeah, like the Lord keeps giving me for them. Yeah, um, not not to like put them in a like a box, like right. this is what I see, but just when they do something that is very clearly God, I was like, it's just something about their countenance shifts. They get crazy eyes. It's like, they're really passionate. They're so yeah. excited. They're like on fire. And you're like, you should pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Like that's a birthright gift that the Lord gave you in the womb. Like that comes effortless for you. There's wow. a, there's an anointing on that. There's there, it might be for this moment in this particular, my son's now in college. He came home last weekend mm -hmm. and we had like a three hour conversation. It's like, we all get, wow. in, um, we all get like have a family conversation and eventually we Gabe and Kennedy are like, I'm getting tired. And then Pierce and I just <laughs> go in for like, and then we wind up praying and it was just so sweet to mm -hmm. continue continue to call our kids forth right. to what God has already kind of set in motion for yeah. them and remind them sometimes when they're with all their peers, they're just kind of like, I'm like, but who's leading and how right. much are you abiding in the season? And mm -hmm. just pointing them it's back beautiful. to those beautiful things the Lord has already given them. Yeah. So I'm yeah. thankful, even though a little later, mm -hmm. to really see what God sees yeah. and what mm -hmm. he's gifted them with. Yeah. yeah, I think there's been two seasons where we went kind of from like striving to thriving. Mm -hmm. And the first season was, so I went through an abusive marriage, got a divorce, didn't think I was ever gonna get married again. I was like, I'm gonna be an Olivia Pope, like aside, like I'm not yeah. gonna nobody man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, I'm gonna be on it, you know? <laughs> and then I, I get remarried and I get into this relationship and th there's, you know, what the enemy does, he kind of thwarts the way that right. we process God's word. Right. You know, mm -hmm. did God really say that? Did you right. really hear it? And I, I remember getting into this, my, my marriage now with Sam, and I was like, I'm going to be so submissive. I'm going to be like, I'm about to crush it. I'm going to be submissive, submissive. I'm going to bend backwards. I'm going to do back bends up in this mug. <laughs> and what happened inadvertently was I was so wounded from my last marriage. Mm. And there was so much healing that needed to be done that mm. Sam turned into a savior for me. Mm. And you can't place that type of expectation right. no. on a spouse. No. Mm -mm. And it went real south real fast. Like it was cool at first. I was like, I'll follow you anywhere, you know? And then it went to, I, I have an identity. I have something I want to say. And he's like, well, I'm confused. I don't know who you want to be here. Mm -hmm. And I had to submit to my heavenly father mm -hmm. to give me everything that I needed to, to be whole in this marriage so that we could have the mutual submission. And then we started thriving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I would say the second mm -hmm. season was with my daughter. My daughter's, you know, from my first marriage, it's very difficult to parent someone that represents a lot of pain in your past. Mm -hmm. Very, very hard to show compassion to that. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to my counselor and my, my daughter has sensory processing disorder, ODD, oppositional defiance disorder, ADHD. We've been kicked out of preschools. It has been a tough road for her. And she's amazing and awesome in all of her ways. Mm -hmm. right. But I remember telling my counselor, man, I just, she's just sucking the life out of me. Mm -hmm. And it's making it harder to love her. Mm -hmm. She's like, you can say it. I'm like, I don't like her all the time. <laughs> she said, I know. Okay. But what would happen if we reframe this? Mm. But what would happen if we, we started to ask God to have, mm. uh, to give you a different view, to renew your spirit in this way and to maybe recognize that there's something redemptive Mm. and helping Dylan process through some of her deepest pains when you yourself didn't have anyone to walk mm. you through it. Mm. And I'm telling, I was like, oh, snap. Oh, I was mm. like, so it's, it really is like this refocusing. You yeah. know, thriving doesn't yeah. mean we have it all right. I mean, we're right. testing out ADHD right. medicine right, right now. We are confused, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do. Right. We don't know what our next steps are. But we're thriving in the sense that our gaze is locked on a heavenly right. father who has every single tool that we need. Right. And now we're not drowning. Mm. Right. She's like, all right, Lord. Right. Yeah. You do your thing now. <laughs> right. We're going to be good, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's been beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I love that you said we're not drowning. Because yeah. I think that's where purpose shifted for me when I wasn't afraid anymore. Mm -hmm. Because I spent so many years just looking spiritual, but really running scared. Mm -hmm. And um, about 15 years ago, I just, the bottom dropped mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, in his kindness, he flattened me. And I remember, you know, you said you've never heard an audible voice, but it's so loud, so <laughs> clear, it's so unmistakable. And he said, Lisa, I'm going to take you to the basement because you've been running from fear your whole life. And I'm going to sit there with you in the dark until it doesn't own you anymore. Ooh. And for about six months, wow. I was like, just like a newborn calf. I was so weak. Mm -hmm. And I'd never been brave enough to be weak before mm -hmm. with wow. the Lord. Wow. And it was in that season that I got 
strong. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of learned that that vulnerability and strength mm-hmm. are, are not opposites and ends of the continuum. Mm-hmm. They're the same thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think had I gotten the place where I thought there's still going to be deep ends in my life, I just won't drown anymore. Mm-hmm. So I'm not afraid of the deep end anymore. Yeah. I don't think That's I would have had mm-hmm. even the capacity to go, yes, I can be a single mom. Mm-hmm. This is probably going to be hard, but it'll be a cool kind of hard. (laughs) And so for me, thriving was really connected with not being afraid I'd drown anymore. Then when he says the water will not cover you to go, really won't. But I was reading the other day, you know, that old story about Joshua leading them through the Jordan. God parted it. But he said, when I parted the Red Sea, y'all just had to sit on the bank and watch me do it. You just got to observe the miracle. You've been with me for 40 years now. So this time you have to participate. You got to yeah. get your feet wet. <laughs> so and, and and that's that's I think Mo, where I learned to not be afraid of failing at my purpose. Mm-hmm. I don't think I believed that I could carry out a purpose well without really dropping the ball. Mm-hmm. And it took me not being afraid of dropping the ball mm-hmm. for me to really pick up my purpose. Mm. Yes. For me, in raising my children and my family, I think it was a, a major shift to thriving when I understood the power of my words, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the power of confession. Yeah, yeah. speaking what do you want to see and not oh, what you come see. On. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, speaking the word of God over your children, mm-hmm. over your marriage, That's over so your good. family, yes. even when things look totally, totally down. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, you begin to see. Mm-hmm that there is life and death in the power of your tongue. Mm -hmm. And if you just begin to speak Mm. those things, you will see them come to pass in your life. Mm -hmm. You'll see a shift. And you realize too that God thrives all the time, Mm -hmm. even when you you don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't feel like you're thriving, but he's in control of your whole situation. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a peace that really surpasses all understanding. So yeah. Thriving and healing and purpose, all of that seems to come in when we begin to speak the word of God, mm-hmm. speak to the storm, you yeah, know, good. speak to the mountain. There, There's power in your words. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the word of God tells you that, you right. know. So even mm-hmm. when you see your son doing this or your daughter doing this, don't speak what you see. Speak mm-hmm. what, what you want to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Literally, as I was thinking about this conversation, I literally wrote down Ephesians chapter 4, 29, do not use foul or abusive language. Mm-hmm. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those mm-hmm. who hear mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Little mm-hmm. things that even right. our counselors like, where, you know, right. we tell our kids, don't be bad. Don't be yeah. bad. Don't be bad. Mm-hmm. Versus, oh, you, you are, are awesome. good. Yeah. You, you are doing so doing. good. Yeah. And right. sometimes we make bad choices. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Right. And we can, we have the ability to make bad right. choices. Right. We can also make good choices That's because right. we are good. We come from good. Right. Little things like that. And I, I, it's so hard these days because we've got all the Enneagram numbers, okay, mm-hmm. telling us, well, I talk like this. Mm-hmm. I've got this mm-hmm. thing. And God's telling us here, like, let's take the badge off and remember right. that our words are so powerful when it comes to just thriving as right. families and who That's we want right. to be. And I think That's as our right. kids grow, even how we speak that life has, it's almost like um, been so sweet and interesting. I, I remember a real painful season, probably, I don't know, five years ago, and the Lord gave me a picture of that child a decade later, just like a mm. thriving picture of yeah, that child. Yeah. And I was like, one of these things is not like the other, but <laughs> right. yeah. this is a 10 year journey. One, right? And I even told that child, I said, I, the Lord has just given me clarity of what he has for you mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. what that oh, looks wow, like. And, and, yeah. and it was almost like, okay, you know? Yeah. And when those things still come, even now mm-hmm. in teens and college, yeah. what's been really sweet is that immediately we'll just go, let's just pray. Mm-hmm. You start because yeah. I, I yeah. learn a lot about where my kids are with the Lord and just yeah. how they talk to the Lord. And mm-hmm. and as long mm-hmm. as they feel like, hey, you start and you tell because they'll come to me and tell me all the things they're feeling or struggling mm-hmm. or thing. And I was like, you know, why don't we pray and you tell God everything you just yeah. told me mm-hmm. and good. I'll it's I'll then good. come around you and mm-hmm. I'll cover yeah. you and I'll and I'll, dad and I'll pray with you. Mm-hmm. But like this is us sending you back to the Throne yeah. and the source, and we're wow. we're 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 gonna be the stretcher right. bearers. Yeah. But in the end, um, like I want to know that your intimacy 
is when you leave home, you know, you know right. where, you where to know take that to anxiety right. or so those good. fears or those things. Right. I think it's so, so good. good to teach our children, whether they're biological or adopted or mm -hmm. fostered or spiritual children, just the kids you get to nurture, mm -hmm. yeah. to speak words of thriving. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're teaching them. Mm -hmm. I started teaching Missy um, about a year ago, and English is still second language for her. So, mm. you know, she has a mama that's a windbag, and um, <laughs> Missy's words matter more than mine do. She uses, um, she's more careful with her words. But I taught her the prayer of examine. Mm. But we do it in the context of every night. We go, what was your thorn of the day, and what was your rose of the day? Mm -hmm. But we always end on rose. Mm -hmm. So what was your highlight? Mm -hmm. And I've started saying, baby, how did God bloom a rose today? Mm -hmm. So she mm -hmm. associates something good, even if it Beautiful. seems pretty elementary. You know, a, a friend shared his, I don't know, you know, Oreo with her at lunch at school. She goes, God gave me. And, and I think I just want her to begin to learn all of my blessings. You know, no good thing does he withhold from us. Mm -hmm. So I think we can speak. Yep. We can at least open the gateway for thriving Come on. to continually to remember what he's done yeah. Yeah. and to remember what he's doing and to be hopeful about what's ahead. We yeah. can laugh at the yeah. days to come, not because we're comedians, yeah. Yeah. but because huh. we know how good our God is. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. just want to encourage those too. Like I, I didn't come from affirming homes. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't have all the language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It is a hard thing. Mm -hmm. There is legitimately a calendar invite on my phone that says affirm Dylan every single morning wow. mm -hmm. because it doesn't come natural to me. Mm -hmm. And things move very quickly from like an awkward stage to a mechanical stage to a natural yeah. stage. And we can have those moments where you're like, I didn't get yeah. this growing up, yeah. but I can practice it and I can do it to my best That's ability mm -hmm. and create those those new, like just waves and ways that yeah. we can love and nurture our family. Yeah. Cause it's hard it's sometimes. Yeah. So much of this, the actual carrying out, like you're saying, cultivating conversation, so much of the thriving has mm -hmm. had to do with mm. what we actually practice. It makes mm -hmm. me think of the Hebrew word chesed, which is secure attachment. Mm. Um, it really awesome. means like, it's so hard when things don't translate directly. We almost can't imagine how rich this chesed love is mm. that is steadfast love. It's used in Exodus 34, six mm. through seven um, and other times through the word, but that is where it's repeated, Lord, your steadfast love, mm -hmm. your steadfast love. And this has said, this feeling, this secure attachment isn't just an emotion or a feeling, it's actually love in action. Mm -hmm. And when this love exists, we, we come to it to be our source, right? And I just think so much about how important a home base is mm -hmm. in all of our lives, mm -hmm. right? How important it is to, mm -hmm. to not be a, a vagabond wandering, right. you know, seeking purpose mm -hmm. or identity like we've been talking mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. but to have a place of chesed, of mm -hmm. safe, secure mm -hmm. attachment that actually puts its words and its beliefs into motion for mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. And how important that home base is where we find our identity, mm -hmm. whether in the spiritual, with God or literally in a family, I'm gonna speak your identity over you yeah, right yeah, now in identity. advance. I've received this and I believe this for you. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all of that should be what the home and the yeah. family are for people. Now we live yeah. in a broken world with a lot yeah. of broken circumstances. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. But why do you all think that we need that home base so desperately, every single yeah. one of us, you know, yeah. kid, yeah. adult. Right. Why do you think that secure place becomes so important for our thriving? The Bible started with family. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and so right. we all long to be, to belong. Yeah. Right. It's, a, it's something that we're wired up That's for, right. mm -hmm. you know, to belong, to be loved unconditionally, right. to, to be able to have a safe place, mm -hmm. you know, to be able yeah. to be yourself. Mm -hmm. I think to me when it's, it, you know, it's like when I met my husband, it's like I found my home, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you, it, nothing you really had to work for. It's just like, ah, cause yeah. home, you can just be yourself. You can take yeah. off the makeup, you can do, yeah. you just, you can relax. There's yeah. rest, yeah. there's peace in, yeah. in a home. And that's yeah. why the enemy fights for our, yeah. he, he, oh, after, yeah. he tries to tear that's up right. our home. He tries mm -hmm. to tear up our children, he tries to stop all. Yeah. Because he realizes it's in that, in that safety, 
zone, there's peace, there's right. hope, there's thriving. Yeah. Right. Everybody will fulfill their That's purpose, right. yeah. That's right. you know, and so mm -hmm. it's real right. and we're all wired up to belong and to yeah. receive the nurturing right. that we need, right. you know. That's so good. And um, wired up is, I think, the perfect way to say it mm -hmm. because sometimes I think we forget we were made in the image uh, yeah, I, of a perfect of a, community. That's mm -hmm. right. Because we have a Trinitarian God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Genesis 1, 26 and 27, we were made in His image, mm -hmm. not just the image of Father God, Father, Son, Father, Holy Spirit. I, th I think I'll probably mispronounce this, but I think the Greek word is perichoesis, mm -hmm. is the word that describes the Trinity. And it's, an, it's a, basically a dance in a circle. Mm -hmm. It's perfect choreography. Wow. And so there's this sense of shalom, mm -hmm. yeah. of being perfectly shalom. known, perfectly mm -hmm. fitting. You're all moving together. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a choreography. Mm -hmm. And we were divinely wired for that. Mm -hmm. you know, Augustine says mm -hmm. only the Christian God exists in perfect community unto oh. itself. None of us were born in perfect community. Mm -mm. Yeah. Now, I don't care how no. great family no. was. There's no yeah. perfect oh, great community yeah. no. <laughs> apart from communion with God. Right. Yeah. And so I think really when you talk about you want your kids to come home, don't you know the heart of Father God mm -hmm. is it's home, that right? it's that father <laughs> and the prodigal. He's always yeah. he's always wooing us into his arms. Yeah. I think. This is why God's design is for spiritual family, for plurality. When my father and mother forsake me, Lord, you are yeah, there. That's right. that's why good. he designed the body that's to right. function in health. And I think that's so right. many people are waiting. You're just waiting for that invitation to the table with, from somebody, with somebody, to that group, that group of women that seem right. like they have such a tight-knit thing. And this orphan spirit, as you yeah. mentioned before, the enemy wants you to just stay isolated, that's right? right. Yeah. And yes, that's right. to not make yourself vulnerable again, right. mm -hmm. especially if they're not reaching out arms to mm -hmm. receive me. Well, right. I'll just do me. Mm -mm. I just it's want to good. prophesy and speak life over those right. who are listening. You set a table, mm -hmm. set a yeah, table that's good, man. and reach that's good, man. out and reach bring out. people that's in. Yeah. There is healing to be found in that's fellowship right. yeah, and community. So right. And it's not, it's not our portion to just sit in gloom and despair and wait. It's our portion to right. draw near to the yes, heart of Lord. God yes. and to reach out and invite That's others right. in. So and we've found that in our own family yeah. where we lacked in spiritual community as we just set the table and said, hey, yeah. to the outcasts or the hurt or to yeah. whosoever, yeah. Yeah. Lord, draw them in. We have found fellowship that a couple of days ago was my birthday and I was sitting reflecting on what I was most thankful for from the year prior. And I realized it wasn't any of the what's, it was all the who's. Mm -hmm. right. It was who right. God had brought into our life mm -hmm. and how much transformation that had brought. Mm -hmm. And we are a thriving it's family wonderful. of fellowship, even though we're all different places yeah. of maturity and yeah. backgrounds, yeah. Yeah. because it's safe. Yeah. And yeah. because we're known and we speak our true yeah. identity to each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. Cece, I would love for you to pray us um, through this moment, okay. uh, just with the wisdom and the beauty you you bring, having mm -hmm. known a, a beautiful family, having cultivated a beautiful family and known mm -hmm. thriving for mm -hmm. years. Can you Thanks, draw God. us into um, a place of prayer? Um, Praise the Lord, I'll be honored. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you because you are our heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And Lord, there is nothing like your love. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like your love. And your desire for us is for all of us to thrive. Mm -hmm. And because you sent your son Jesus and Jesus gave his life and shed his blood, yes. the door to thriving is open to all. Mm -hmm. And I pray for those who are watching that they would open up their hearts and say yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we come against the enemy. We come against every lie of the enemy that have told them that this is not for them. And it's impossible. And all the pain that they've experienced, that they will never be able to thrive. Father God, we bind the enemy right now, Lord, and we speak your word over them. We thank you for their families being restored. We thank you, Father God, for shifting the atmosphere. We thank you for giving them the boldness, Father God, to, to know that you know them by name and they are not yeah. forgotten and you have an incredible plan for their lives. All they have to do is invite you in, invite you into their 
whole family situation, Father God, and say your will be done. We say your will be done over their lives, Father God, and we thank you for the children coming together. We thank you, Father God. Lord, you did it for me. My son was on the other side of the world, Father God, and he had an encounter with your love. So we know that all things are possible with you, Lord, and I thank you for families coming together and sons and daughters coming home, Father God, and, and, and them having an atmosphere a sanctuary in their yes, own, Father Jesus. God, where they're loving one yeah. another and forgiving yeah. one another and yes. healing is taking place yes. because of who you are, yes. Father God. And so we yeah. thank you in advance for everyone who's listening to us for mm. a shift to happen in their lives and in their family mm. so that their family will bring you glory mm. and honor. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.